I also know I might come off as a little aggressive about this whole blowout thing, but blowouts are my passion. <laughs> She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something bad features. You'll find the beauty goes much deeper once you get to meet her. Hello, my friends. Today is a video that you guys have all been waiting for and asking for, not all of you, but oh, quite a few of you have been asking for my curly to straight blowout routine. And I'm here today to give it to you. We have nice, freshly washed hair and we are about to give ourselves an at-home salon quality, frizz-free, smooth, sleek, voluminous blowout. I know that was a lot of buzzwords, but it's all true. I have to say, my blowout game is very strong. I have seen many a curly girl on this platform try to blow out their hair or blow out their hair and I have to say none of them are quite up to my standard I don't that, that that's not hate I just have a very specific I have very specific standards for my kind of blowout I don't want any kind of frizz volume I want it to be very specific basically I hate frizz I want my blowout to be nice and sleek and smooth and I want it to last an entire week if not longer I just washed my hair after 10 days and my blowout it wasn't perfect it was gross it was dirty but I could have still styled it I could have still styled it. I still would have, could have looked great. Yesterday, the ponytail I did on my day 10 hair was honestly the best pony, ponytail I've ever done in my life. And it was accidental and I'll probably never be able to recreate it again. But it was still a good blowout after 10 days of not washing my hair. So if you have really curly hair and you want to learn how to blow it out and actually have it look sleek and smooth and not frizz on you the moment there's a drop of moisture in the air and have it last for at least a week, keep on watching, sis. I got you. Okay, first and foremost, you're obviously gonna have to wash your hair. I always try to go with a shampoo and conditioner. Well, a shampoo and a hair mask that is damage repairing or a, like a protein based shampoo and hair mask. I, I also always do, well, I only ever do hair masks in my hair. I never use regular conditioner because I only wash my hair once a week and hair masks, I just treat myself every time I wash my hair. So this time around, I actually, I'm using like a new line. They sent this to me. This is the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Restructuring Bond Repair Shampoo. And then I also have the Restructuring Bond Repair Mask. This felt really really great in my hair did not feel stripped at all they are it is a sulfate free formula which step number one sulfate free stop washing your hair with sulfates it's just you don't need them like technology has advanced science has advanced where you don't need harsh sulfates in your shampoo to get a nice good clean nobody really needs sulfates in their shampoo unless you have the greasiest hair ever you do not need sulfate especially if you're a curly girl just cut sulfates out altogether i know there's other ingredients like silicones and parabens and all that but honestly to me sulfates are the worst enemy they're just going to strip your hair dry it out you just don't need that harsh of a chemical to clean your hair you just don't so go with the sulfate free formula i used this today i really liked it uh it's the first time i'm using it they did send this to me but this is not sponsored at all guaranteed but i am going to be using their line just to kind of give it a try and it's like kind of all the products i would need in a blowout so we're going to try it so this is my blowout routine but also like a mini review of these products we'll see how we like them um because they also did send a leave-in heat protection spray which we need a heat protection spray and then this is a bond repairing leave-in treatment mousse i'm a little nervous to use this i don't think i'm going to for this video because one i don't really care for mousses i, don't, I just don't want it to my to make my hair feel sticky so i don't i think we're gonna count this up today I'll, I'll tbd on whether this works i just feel like this could go very wrong and i'm trying to give you like an actual good blowout routine so i'm not gonna use that today um and then we have this replenishing moisture cc cream for your hair 10 in 1 complete correction leave-in so this is like a leave-in treatment and then we've got our leave-in heat protection spray so i think i'm gonna use this use both of these even though this is already heat protection so i'm gonna do a little bit of this and then most of this but i will say most of the time the only product i put in my hair before I blow it out is this from dry bar it is their prep rally it's kind of like a CC cream too it's a prime and prep detangler it also has um, heat protection in it it's basically like an all-in-one kind of heat protection spray that also nourishes your hair and as you can see I love it I'm already halfway through I spray a ton of this in my hair it does a great job at protecting your hair making it feel nice and shiny and smooth and not weighing it down at all before your blowout because I have to say even though you have curly hair even though you have dry hair you do not need to put a lot
lot of product in your hair before you blow it out. You just don't, you just really don't. As long as you're using the right techniques and the right heat protection, you don't need a lot of product in your hair to blow it out. I see people put like all these oils, all these creams, and I'm like, your hair is just gonna be greasy by tomorrow. Stop it, stop doing it. And I also know I might come off as a little aggressive about this whole blowout thing. Blowouts are my passion. <laughs> mm. Iced coffee is my other passion. For this blowout routine, you're gonna need a heat protectant and a leave-in. This is usually the only one I use leave-in and heat protectant but today to try out these products i'm going to be using this uh caviar anti-aging reconstructing bond repair leave-in heat protection spray from alterna and then their replenishing moisture cc cream so we're going to need those two products you're also going to need a bunch of clips i like to use these little claw clips and then also these kind of claw clips like alligator clips just to section my hair because we're gonna be sectioning a lot. Sectioning is key to this blowout routine. You're also gonna need a blow drying tool of some sort. I have the Dyson Airwrap and I put the volumizing round brush attachment at the, at the top to do my blowout. But if you would like a more affordable option, I'm gonna leave everything I'm using and all of my affordable options or like anything I'm recommending, I'm gonna leave that down below. You could also use the one from Revlon. You could also use the one from Drybar. There are a lot of tools like this that aren't $500, but this is the one I have, so this is the one I'm gonna be using because my boyfriend did pay $500 to buy me this, so I will be getting all of my use out of it. I know it's incredibly in expensive, and I also know that there's very com comparable products on the market, but he'll kill me if I use anything else. So this is what I'm using. And then you're also gonna need a flat iron. We, this blowout routine is gonna be mainly focused on blowing your hair out, but because we have curly hair and because we wanna maintain a sleek and smooth look without any frizz, we are gonna need a flat iron to achieve that look. My mom can do it, I, the Dominicans can do it. There's very few people in the world that can get my hair to look perfectly sleek and smooth with only a blow drying tool. I'm not one of those people. I need a flat iron to get really into my kinks and my my kitchens and my nooks and my crannies. I need a flat iron. So this one is from Ferdin. I got it on Amazon. I will link it down below. It's round so you can also curl your hair with it. But down here, it's like, this is where you turn it on. And I keep it on 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So heat your flat iron up to 410. If you have curly hair like me, I'm like a 3B, 3C. If you have a less curly hair, I would go for a lower heat setting. If you you have more curly hair like a, a four or anything higher than a 3c um, then I would go to all the way up to 450 basically the curlier your hair the more frizzy your hair the higher the heat setting you need okay so let's get into this okay my hair is nice and freshly washed the curls oh my god my curls actually look really good they're like clumping together so nicely you'll love to see it sis good job guys good job being good curls. We're gonna start off by spraying, or no, actually we should do this first. <laughs> We're gonna do the CC cream first. I'm gonna take about that much, might be too much. Ooh, this is thick, it smells good though. It smells like the shampoo and conditioner. I'm gonna focus up my ends, but our whole head needs some love. So get it all over your hair. Not too much, but not too little. Focus it on those ends because your ends are gonna be the most damaged always, but especially when you're doing a blowout. So make sure you get it on those ends and then take your leave in. Some people do like, you know, spray heat protectant by section. I like to just do it all in the beginning, brush it through so I can just go through and do the blowout. I like to focus it on, you know, my hairline because that is also another part of my hair that gets damaged pretty easily. Not easily, but the most because I put the most heat on it and then spray it through the rest of your hair. Make sure you get all these under layers too. We're gonna brush it through, but make sure you get all those layers too on the ends. Get it everywhere, see us. Ever since I got my continuous mist like water bottle, anything that's like a pump spray is the most annoying. <laughs> then you're gonna get a brush. This is the wet brush. I highly recommend getting a wet brush. Maybe not this brand, but I know like basically every brush company makes a, a hairbrush specific for wet hair now get it because it will save you some damage that you don't need from brushing your hair while it's wet because your hair is the most fragile while it's wet but you also need to blow dry your hair while it's wet so just save yourself the hassle and get a wet brush they also make detangling a lot easier you also if your hair dries quickly like air dries quickly keep a spray bottle on hand because another tip that i have is do not rough dry your hair i've seen a lot of people that do curly to straight blowouts rough dry their hair and they end up frizzy 
because if you have really curly frizzy hair you do not want to rough dry it it's you basically want to start off with not completely soaking wet hair but pretty wet hair because you need to kind of mold the shape into being straight you don't want it to dry at all curly because it will stay frizzy it just will I mean at least I know for my hair rough drying does not work I always end up frizzy when I rough dry my hair so I go straight from wet into blowing it out straight I do not just rough dry my hair so that it blows out quicker no you have to go from wet to straight not with your flat iron oh my god no do not touch your flat iron to your hair unless your hair is completely dry but with the blow dryer start off with wet hair I'm telling you, just do it and it will be better. For example, like my ends over here are a little dry. So I'm just gonna hit it with a little water. Not too much, but you don't want any hair to be dry when you're blow drying. I didn't even tell you. I basically, right at like, right behind my ears, I sectioned this bottom part off. And that's what we're gonna start with. Clip everything else up and then you're gonna split this down the middle in the back. I'm gonna clip this part away so it's not in my way. If you can do things without like having to clip every other piece of hair away, go for it. But for me, I'm like very big about sectioning and working on like one specific piece at a time because otherwise I get, I don't know, crazy. So split it in half and then I'm gonna take like this part at the nape of my neck, this very bottom piece. It's about like a one inch section. You can actually take a little bit more than that, but the smaller your sections, the smoother you can get it and the quicker it is to dry. So work in pretty small sections. Um, so this is the first section we're gonna take. We're gonna take our blow dryer. We're gonna get it right up under here and then high heat, high uh, power, and we're gonna press on. And you're not gonna turn it yet. You're just gonna kind of drag it through to get like a good smooth dry all the way through. And then the second time you go in, you're gonna apply some tension by twirling it. And if you're using a blow dry and a round brush, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but you can still do it because you just twirl the brush while you hold the blow dryer next to it. But keep it turning. And that's gonna give you like a nice little wave at the end too. Keep it turning, keep it turning. Boom, that's our first piece. I'm gonna go at the root a little bit longer. You wanna make sure that everything is nice and dry. And you can also pull it to hold like some tension. The more tension you have, the straighter it's gonna be. And then twirling it just gives it like this little curl so that you don't have like stick straight hair. I'm not like a huge fan of like stick straight hair. I feel like when you do a blowout, you kind of want some body and some movement in your hair. But yeah, that's basically the first piece done. And if you can look really close, you can see that this at the root, because it's this kind of tool, if I had like a, a real round brush and blow dryer, I could get this a lot straighter, but it would also take so much more time and it's just not worth it. And I would probably still have to go over with a flat iron. So instead, I use my Dyson. You can use your Revlon, your dry bar, whatever you got. And then at the end of this piece, once it's all dry, completely dry, I take my flat iron and I just go straight up to the root and just do a few passes just at the root. You don't have to do this to your whole head. It's basically just because the root, as long as your root is straight, your blowout's gonna last. So you wanna just take the extra time to make sure your root is actually super straight. And you can do that very easily with a flat iron. And then, because this is a little bit too curly for me, and just to smooth everything out completely, I just do one quick pass over the whole strand of hair, and that's how you seal in the sleek and the smoothness. We still have a little bit of a curl. It obviously took it down a little bit. Sleek, smooth piece. You can also go back in with the flat iron and curl the edges a little bit more, but that's how you get a sleek, smooth blowout for a whole week. You blow it out with this, and then you go back and pass over with the flat iron just to smooth everything out. So now I'm going to take one of my claw clips, clip that away, and then we're gonna move on to another section. And we're gonna basically repeat this same size section with my the thickness of my hair I can do like three on each side so I'm gonna do this over and over again until we're on to the next piece and then I will show you how we section off the next layer of hair
layer is done. For some reason, this side is like particularly frizzy today. I don't know what it is, but I just had to go over it with the flat iron a little bit more than this side. I, I really don't know what it is, but we're still sleek and smooth over here. So first layer done. Now I'm going to clip this away and we're going to section off the next layer. Also always make sure that like, obviously because it's like the back of your head, this part right here, like at the very middle where those sections meet, go over that with the flat iron just like one or two times, just because it's like the last strands of hair and you might've missed them a little bit. Like obviously they're dry and stuff, but you might've not went over them as much as you should have. So just like right in the middle where those parts meet, just go over it like once. Now we're gonna move on to the next layer. I usually like to do this front section separate. So I'm basically just going to like go right behind my ears all the way up and then section off this. It honestly doesn't matter how you section it. I'm just showing you guys how I do it. But as long as you keep taking like small pieces each time you go over, it's fine. Like it doesn't matter how, which way you section it, but just make sure you're taking pretty small pieces. Now we're going to, this is, this is like the bulk of our hair back here, this section. So it's going to take longer, but once you're done with this section, you're over the hump and you're almost done. So I'm going to basically, I don't have to split it down the middle. I'm basically just going to start from either end and just start taking like whatever, like these size sections and just keep going all the way across until we're done. So I'm going to take this, clip it away and then work my way through this whole chunk of hair with sections about this size. And if my ends are dry, which they are, I'm going to just wet them a little bit before going in with the blow dryer. And that is that we're basically just going to be doing the same exact thing through our whole head. We've got these two layers done. As you can see, most of our head, oh, this little piece right here, prone to frizz. This last piece I did up here was like a bigger chunk. I definitely should have separated it into two. So because of that, I have to go over with the flat iron a little more. Cause you can see like, this is gonna be frizz if I step outside right now. It's always good to like pick up the hair and like let it fall and you can see exactly where it needs to be touched up. Like anything that isn't completely straight, you'll be able to see that way. But yeah, now we're onto our last section. This will definitely need to be wet because it's been sitting the longest and my hairline always dries quickest, like air dries quickest. This is when you decide where you want to part your hair. So I'm gonna brush it all forward. And I think I'm gonna do a side part today. I usually like to start off my week with a side part. So I'm gonna part it. And then basically we're gonna do the exact same thing we've been doing, like taking those little sections. And this part you can do even tinier sections because I know for me, this, like the frame of my face, my edges are the hardest to get smooth and straight. I definitely need the help of the flat iron a little bit more in this section. So part it and then go ahead and do your small sections the same way you've been doing. So I'm gonna clip away this section and then do this right here. Not this whole big chunk, but start off on this side and then move over to this side. So I'm gonna start off right here and do the same thing we've been doing. And then when it comes to this part, you wanna take teeny tiny sections with the flat iron just to make sure that your root is really nice and smooth, sleek and smooth because obviously this is the first part that people are gonna see. And for me specifically, the first part that frizzes. So I like to take teeny tiny sections and make sure that the roots are really nice and smooth.
uh, okay, you guys, we're basically done. We've got all of our sections. Now this is the point where you can go through, brush it out, see if there's any places that need a little bit of a touch up. I think I'm pretty good. As you can see, we have nice, sleek, smooth hair, but there's still some body. There's still some wave at the end. Now, just because my ends do need a trim, they are looking a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil. This is the one I like to use at the end of my blowouts. This is the Bumble and Bumble BB Hairdresser Invisible Oil. I do about two pumps of that because they're pretty small pumps. Rub it through my hands and then basically just comb it through the ends um, just to give it some shine a little bit of softness just because I do need a trim at the moment honestly even if I didn't need a trim I would probably do this I know a lot of people like to put oil in their hair or serums before they blow it out but to me I don't know for me my concept is that like if you put an oil before and then you put heat on it it's kind of like frying your hair like the same way you would put like a french fry in a pan of oil if, it, if it's hot it's gonna fry whatever goes into the oil or whatever the oil touches so that's kind of how I think about it to avoid damage I just do oils at the end which is why I like more cream and like spray products to prep my hair before the blowout as you can see our edges are nice and smooth because we went over with a flat iron and that's about it okay now this blowout will last me over a week if I take care of it properly so I have some tips for you guys to keep your blowout going strong number one is going to be a shower cap anytime you take a shower this week which I would hope is every day this week. Every time you take a shower this week, make sure you are putting all of your hair inside a shower cap. This will protect it from any moisture and make sure that you don't get frizz or curls, unwanted curls, because we just took all that time to make our hair nice and sleek and smooth, wear a shower cap. In addition to a shower cap, whenever you wash your face, get a big headband. You don't need this like big fluffy headband, but get something that's going to protect your edges from moisture because our edges are our most fragile part of our hair, quite frankly, other than like the ends. And if you have to keep repeatedly putting heat on this to touch it up throughout the week, it's just gonna fry your hair. So make sure that you're protecting your edges when you're washing your face, taking off your makeup in the shower I actually do the headband when I take a shower I put the headband on and then the shower cap over top just so that there's like an extra barrier to protect the edges of my hair when I'm in the shower um, just gives me a little bit more security another thing is satin scrunchies this is going to be your best friend so that you don't get like dents in your hair if you like to sleep with your hair up but obviously sleeping with your hair up you can get like dents from like a regular hair tie and stuff just get some satin scrunchies they don't even have to be like real satin or anything just get like soft like scrunchies scrunchies instead of like the elastic ponytail holders get some scrunchies and that'll be your best friend these are silk they don't damage your hair at all I got these at like Dwayne Reed or CVS or something um, another tip is dry shampoo so right now I'll be good and for like another two or three days um, I'll be good without dry shampoo but there's going to be a certain point where my oils from my scalp come through and I need to touch it up just to refresh it so that it's not like my hair is flat stuck to my head and then like not stuck to my head at the bottom because it'll look really weird if like this is all stuck to my head and the rest is like nice and fluffy still because the oil hasn't gotten there so dry shampoo is gonna be your best friend in terms of touching up every day only touch up what you need to like if you get a little bit frizzy around your hairline touch it up very slightly just so that it's smooth again don't try to like put a ton of heat on it all over again if you want to change your part try to do it in a way with like the brush rather than heat just do things to minimize as much heat on your hair as possible just to minimize damage like we took all of this time to make sure everything was nice and smooth so that we don't have to repeatedly do it every day after this my concept is that if you take the time to do it the right way the first time then you'll be set with like a good blowout for way longer so that's what we did today and I have to say love the way it came out as I usually do it's really nice and fluffy got body it's not too full or voluminous because honestly if my blowout is too full and voluminous I always know that I'm gonna frizz immediately and that's just with my hair type I have to say I really liked these products um, I think this I think I would skip it next time I think I would just go with this because the front of my hair where I like applied it first is of the tiniest bit not greasy but I can feel the product in my hair in the front part of my hair more um, where I like applied it so I feel like just for my hair type I don't need both of these I could probably just do with one or the other um, and I tend to like a spray more so I would probably go with this one but if you have a uh, drier more coarse hair than me 
both of these would probably work for you better. Um, I will report back on this. Maybe my next wash, I will try this out. I'm honestly very afraid of it. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, I was gonna like get glam for this outro and all that, but I actually have two classes to teach, um, like one-on-one -on -one makeup classes online. So I'm not gonna like do my makeup, just take it off and do it again. Um, so you get Fresh Face Ashley today. Hope you love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what is your tool of choice when you're giving yourself a blowout or are you just like, nah girl, I ain't giving myself a blowout. Fuck that, I'm going to dry bar when they reopen. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I love a good blowout and I honestly feel like I've mastered it, especially for us girls with curly frizzy hair. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Give it a thumbs up if you did appreciate it. It really helps me out a lot and I love you guys for it. If you watch all the way through the, till the end and you still haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit, hit that button. Become one of my new best friends. Join our YouTube family. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video.